This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's 11 9 22, show number 438. The election is over, Nick. Let's go back to pro wrestling. It's a lot more lifelike and realistic, isn't it? It, it certainly is. And, um, you know, if people haven't realized uh, that, you know, what that we're in a, a left right paradigm, I don't know what to tell them, but it, it is absolutely pro wrestling. In fact, as you said, pro wrestling might be a little bit more real because those guys are better actors. <laughs> and sometimes they actually get hurt. They get punched and they break bones and stuff. But we'll uh, we'll stop torturing that analogy. So it looks like we'll have divided government. And uh, I'm not sure what it means. The markets don't seem to be liking it, though, do they? No, the markets really don't like it today. I, they were expecting a red wave sweep this way. Uh, the markets would be looking forward to gridlock come the new year, but um, I'm, we're not even sure that's going to happen. In fact, there's some elections that may not even get resolved till December. So, um, you know, this is a, an another chaotic election and, um, you know, we'll see how the markets play out right now. I think it's important for everybody to just watch these chart patterns and um, we'll, we'll see what they do going forward here. Yeah. What I love though, is that Florida going from the worst run elections in the country 20 years ago, going to the best run elections 15 minutes uh, after polls close at 7 p.m. The results are in there. Nobody's challenging them. Apparently totally clean, but let's not talk about elections anymore. So, uh, <laughs> you know, Facebook uh, meta major layoffs, 13 percent of the company. Uh, looks like they're following Elon Musk in their personnel uh, HR department. Yeah, it looks like uh, they are, and um, they're doing massive layoffs, and the stock is up about six uh, percent today. So, right now, um, they had to do something. This thing was just cratering fast. Uh, you're talking about a stock a year ago that was trading above three hundred and eighty dollars a share. Now it's trading, you know, just above a hundred, and that's even with today's bounce. So, um, again, uh, they had to do something, and uh, you know, again, Elon Musk. Excuse me, uh, you have a uh, Zuckerberg there embracing this uh, metaverse. And, you know, I, honestly, it looks like nobody even wants this metaverse. So I, I think it's a lost cause, but maybe it's for a bigger picture down the road. But um, just sinking money into this, you know, my kids want nothing to do with it. I, and I go off of them quite a bit. You know, are they on Instagram? Are they on WhatsApp? They're, they're really using nothing that Facebook is offering anymore. Yeah. So maybe those people who've been laid off can go find employment in the metaverse. I would think that's uh, that that might be an, a good alternative. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I hear there's help wanted signs all over the place there. So let's see what happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so semis are holding up pretty well, though, right? Yes. The semiconductors are the one industry group that I've seen strength. Now, today they're down 1.8 percent. But one thing I've noted and I've told my membership, though, is that the semis right now are outperforming or showing relative strength on a daily chart compared to the Nasdaq and Nasdaq 100. And that is very, very important. When the semis lead, even though they're only leading by a little bit here, it's very, very important. If you take a look at the SMH, which is the semiconductor ETF, you'll notice that price is trading above its 20-day and 50-day moving averages. Now, if you take a look at the NASDAQ composite, price is trading below the 20 and 50-day moving average. So we know that the semiconductors right now are showing daily chart relative strength, and you have to respect that when you see it. It doesn't mean it can't fall apart tomorrow. Ultimately, this is a bear market. What we're really trying to do as traders is just figuring out how high this bounce can go and when does it end. And um, right now, the semis, are saying there could still be a little bit more to the overall bounce. But um, today could be a very important day, and maybe that will change. All right. Talk to us about energy. Well, energy is getting hit a little bit today. You have, uh, you have uh, crude oil 
trading down a little bit, down about 1.8% to around $87 a barrel. Nat gas has pulled back in a big way. That's down about 5.5%. As you know, I did close out my Nat gas play two days ago, but I am looking to buy back into that shortly. And then you have all the integrated energy stocks, whether it's Exxon, uh, Chevron, and Conoco. They're all trading a bit lower. And oil services down about 3.5%. I think what happened with a lot of energy here is simply it just got overbought, it got extended, and today it's coming back in. Also, uh, the election results, um, being that it is not a red wave sweep, um, may be hurting energy a little bit as well today. All right. Well, yeah, you know, it just needs an excuse to come down. What about gold? I mean, that has been uh, gold and silver stellar performers. Gold and silver have been on fire this week, as you know. Uh, when you take a look at gold, though, it, it, it's pulling back a little bit, just a touch right now, but it needed a breather after yes, yesterday's big advance. If you take a look at gold futures chart, you know, that got all the way up to, I believe, even this morning, gold was a little bit higher. It got to around 1725. So you have a lot of resistance here. It looks like gold futures tagged the 100 day moving average. And um, they're going into a significant pivot from early October. So there's a lot of resistance here. So gold will need to consolidate uh, before moving higher. And if it does, that forms the pattern. I think gold can get another big advance. But I just want to say this for the record. The gold bottom is not in yet. I know a lot of people are saying that um, gold has left the station. It's a bounce. Um, don't get too excited. Gold still has to go down to that um big 1500 level before we get a major low in place. And then I think gold will um, not only leave the station, but it will leave the old highs behind in due time. So again, we're not there yet. Um, we'll see how it plays out as for silver, silver pulling back a little bit as we speak right now, it's had an amazing run. It needs to consolidate as well as it is into a uh, weekly and daily chart resistance point. Um, silver futures did tag the weekly 50 MA. And and that's a big level, but ultimately silver should be on its way to twenty three dollars after a pullback. All right, and uh, finally, Bitcoin's getting crushed. Yes, and real quick, Kerry, full disclosure: I do own SLV. I just want to put that oh, out sure, there. Sure. Don't don't want to let anybody uh, don't want to mislead anybody. Yeah. So Bitcoin. I mean, where do I start with this? This is like a soap opera for the ages. Talk about pro wrestling. Bitcoin is getting absolutely hammered today down another 10 percent as we speak sitting at around 16,400 and um cryptos are just getting pounded yesterday there was liquidity problems in a lot of exchanges i thought crypto was designed to not have liquidity problems but i guess that we could throw that fallacy out the window uh or that story out the window it's a fallacy and um all in all you know the, the larger time frames has been telling us carrie that it's going sub 12,000 I originally I was sub 13. I'm even lowering that forecast now and say we're going to go sub 12,000 and it's on its way. All right. Well, that is fascinating. Uh, a lot of interesting movements here. Uh, yeah. Silver, I tend to uh, agree with you. Uh, that has uh, basically bounced off resistance there, came roaring back. Uh, you know, the metals markets, they're always looking to fool you. And uh, and uh, they were successful here yet again, probably, if you're like most people. But you should go over to InTheMoneyStocks.com. That's Nick's website where he shows how he's beaten the indices for decades. The Twitter feeds at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, and at Kerry Lutz. Your emails are welcome. KL at KerryLutz.com. Please post your comments on the site. Nick. We will talk to you in a couple of days. Sounds good, Kerry.